Hello and welcome back to the Free Wide Men podcast. We're back, back to audio as well because Johnny's back, and you know we don't. You can't have close-ups of all three of our faces. No it's, one wants to see that. It's inhumane. It wouldn't be fair. <laughs> but yeah, we're back. Uh, busy, busy time in football. Lots of going on. Uh, we won't talk about last time we were here with Selhurst Park and Watford. We d- we don't need to talk about that. That's done. But instead, we'll go to the other end where there's actually good football and Lionel Messi. Just absolutely incredible. Scores his 500th goal for Barcelona in the last, on the last kicks of the Copa del Rey. Not Copa del Rey. El Clasico. El Clasico. <laughs> it's because I've got Copa del Rey in front of me, I promise. I'm not that daft. <laughs> but yeah, he's just absolutely phenomenal player. I mean, we're not going to go into the Messi-Ronaldo debate because it's pointless. It's Everything's been said. We all know Messi's better. <laughs> There's no point. There's no. <laughs> no, he's king for now. He's king for now. But yeah, the band door's coming, coming up. Did you say soon? Uh, well, obviously it's not. Well, not for. It won't be till next December, or this December, I should say. Yeah. But, um, but obviously a lot of what happens this season plays a big part. Plays a big part, and them not being in the Champions League last stage is usually is a deciding factor. Yeah, because haven't to be honest, Barcelona yeah. haven't been great in the Champions. Obviously, they made that amazing comeback, but it's twice in the first leg where they've got battered really they've been completely out like playing off the pitch really yeah, it's it was, rare it's it, weird I, know it's, I was thinking them on Real Madrid Real Madrid was it conceded in first or they've conceded in like every game in the Champions really? League this year which is Jeez. shocking yeah that is shocking got through, but that's another story um, yeah Barca obviously the lucky last last round and I think uh, didn't they say I think Juventus looked at PSG and took lessons from what they didn't do and what they mm. you know, and I used mean, that to Juventus are excellent in defending anyway like they're so good at the back they're probably Italian they're one of basically, yeah, I know they? they've got to be the best would you say the best defensive team in the world they're up there 100% they've, I reckon there's not many the up there they're more possibly Bayern in mm. European football I can speak for world football because I don't know, you know yeah, South yeah, America, okay, yeah. But, um, and we can assume that in the first, you look, I mean, like, if you look at South America in general act- Barcelona are an absolute disgrace defensively. Like I saw them when I went over yeah. there and against Valencia caused them problems. They are d- dreadful. Just dreadful. Um, I was going to say, because you would, you put Chelsea there, but obviously at the moment they've um, conceded every since like... January, they're good defensively they're, for a Premier League team. No, but since that's January they've conceded it? every... Like, they haven't kept a clean sheet for ages. Mm. So, um, I think they'd be up there. I think you could probably make a quite a strong case for Juventus being the best defensive team in Europe. Yeah, yeah, like they're two centre backs, so absolute just know, ridiculous. Moment, aren't they? So Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Buffon is still doing it. Nearly. Oh, did they have 60, 65? Yeah. Yeah. Pass? <laughs> Bit of an interesting Very fact. Age. You guys about Messi looking at all his five hundred goals. How many goals has Messi ever scored in extra time? Extra time. The Barcelona go to extra time, do they? So. <laughs> Or was this an added time, do you mean? No, no, in extra time, like literally... The, the extra... Extra half hour, half hour yeah. I don't, has he ever scored in extra time? He scored once. He has one extra time goal in his whole career, out of 500. Who's that against? You know? I have no idea but I can tell you I know it's in the it was in the second half so he's never scored if you want a really obscure pub <laughs> quiz he's fact, never scored he's never scored in the first half of extra time <laughs> that is a great great well, stat but his <laughs> most goals love that there's, there's, yeah. I've got his, all his stats in front of me and I mean it's just absolutely ridiculous I mean interesting for you joining with the home and away 282 goals at home 204 away slight difference but not much but yeah, he's um the time period that he scored the most goals in is between seventy six and ninety plus, where he's got one hundred twenty five goals, as we saw on the weekend when the time count when the when it matters yeah. and the dime the game. Oh, that was a great he finish. Smashes well. it. Like, that was Beautiful. such a good finish. Like you saw him in real time, the fact he literally had a postage stamp gap to put that in. Yeah, to put it right in the corner. And the right. run by Sergio Roberto yeah, like, as well. Yeah, superb. As he superb. I think I think Real Madrid have defended. I think they've got two of four defenders. Like they they need a better centre back, mm. and their right back is obviously a constant issue. I think Marcelo's in some of the best form I've seen him in, in like yeah. such a he's long time. Like he is just everything he's doing at the moment is is working so well. But um, I th- yeah, Real Madrid would could do with a, a Benucci or mm. someone. They don't play with Rome much anymore, do they? 
I don't, yeah, I never see. Whenever I look at Real, I, I don't see because world. I don't they follow it. Nacho Spanish football too the close. Day but right back, I think. Because when Varane first came into the scene, he looked incredible. Yeah, but like he was. Yeah, they handsome. bought him as you know their. That was the future. <laughs> yeah, but he was. The, but now as well, because he was in the he was check, in the team. Check, check that now. Actually, have a look online and see when his last game was. Because yeah. is he injured? He must be injured. Or he has. He has been injured. He's he, been he, I'm sure he hasn't played. Him. He's class. You can't just drop him. Yeah. You're not playing yeah, Nacho ahead of him, are you? Because who was who played centre back with Ramos? I'm trying to remember. I don't think Pepe played. Play. Who were they? They had Nacho. Oh no, maybe they had Nacho at centre back and then Carvajal right back. Can't remember. Okay, yeah. No, he does. He has been playing throughout. His last. He hasn't. Play, well, maybe he is out injured. He hasn't played. His last game for Real was the second of April. So maybe that's yeah. an injury. Injury. Yeah. Huh. Was he on the bench? Yeah, because he's absolutely class, but you sort of you don't hear as much about him now. You, yeah. you whenever you hear him, he's in the newspapers and the gossip of who's from Europe's going to sign him. Sort it's of like, thing. It's like I said earlier, though, you know, Real Madrid have conceded either first or just generally in every single game in the Champions League so far this year. I think I'm sure I heard a stat like that the other day. So that's not. This is just the way that Zidane's playing. It's just like. And we've got better players up front. Yeah, it's probably one of those. So we've got both, you've got the, t- just the two like opposition. behemoths to spend, and both of them can't really defend. Oh, Barcelona are atrocious. Like, you just, uh, I don't and, like we always complain about Premier League teams can't defend, but then obviously Real Madrid and Barcelona have the <laughs> the luxury of having the likes of Ronaldo and Messi and just absolutely ridiculous players up front, and they don't need a defence. Yeah. But when it gets to those tougher games, it comes in handy. I'm not sure. What it, like, I don't know. I could put my finger on it, but. The it's PK, probably just lack PK of focus. Was it almost feel like Barca? Where PK was the only he literally one is. Defending. I've always said that he's like a one man. He just defense. doesn't. Uh, there's not that understanding there. They don't. They just look like complete polar opposites, and they don't. Their partnership is not working. For a while, I've never. I've not really fancied Barcelona's defense anyway, because it's usually they they're at their best when they've got the ball. They've always been at their best when they've got the ball, and. That's why, that's why I never used to rate Valdez because he never used to get tested. So it's yeah, like, yeah. and then when he was, <coughs> he'd probably concede off Flappe. That's, never been that's a good, why. That's yeah, what, it's like not the, a great place for a keeper. To be he, he is, he is, he is a good keeper. Mm. But like when I used to, you know, look at when you know I faced them, them in the Champions Leagues and the semis, I used to think, how the hell is he Barcelona's goalkeeper? Because he just was. I don't, I don't think they've been a good pressing team since right. what was it, two thousand ten, like early, early mm. Pep, and then before that, you're thinking. Probably, it, well, yeah, they were okay at the start of Enrique's era. And then I feel like they lost a few players and stuff like that because obviously the time they were moving on, like Chavis and stuff, and it yeah. slowly changed their dynamic a little bit. Yeah. There we go. And I want to make a mention for Ronaldo just because he's the first player to get 100 goals in the Champions League. Mm-hmm. And when I went through his goals, I didn't realise his first Champions League goal was... Um, uh, at United, I thought he had it for Lisbon, but he had it at United. And his second was against Roma in the eight-one win, which I didn't realise. Yeah, it just maybe it reflected that when that Roma game, like game, was sort of the time where you saw like the modern Ronaldo, mm. and uh, yeah, it was just a bit of a weird thinking that that was only his second Champions League. I think actually when he looked so like you know uh, good quality then. Like we said earlier, we weren't going to talk about it. Yeah, but I haven't. It's I, haven't hard not to. I haven't been on this since I went to Barcelona, and I'm just yeah. saying this for our. Yeah, you've seen both in person. Thousands now. of listeners, but um, I've seen. I've now seen them both, but a bit of the only once, so you know you can yeah. you can only sort of judge them on that. But I've seen both of them in real life now, and like you can, their goal scoring feats are you know. What are you going to do? Like, how long is a piece of string, splitting yeah. hairs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But to watch them as a footballer, like, if you think of all the garbage cliches that surround football and everything that you want football to be, Lionel Messi is just it. When you watch him play, there's you all the best journalists in the world struggle to describe how much of a joy it is to watch Barcelona and Lionel Messi attack. Like, I just you just sit there and you just it's you're in awe of how. Just he's so good. He's like a computer game. Like he is just, he's absolutely mind blowing to watch. So for me, I think I would. I've come down as much as I enjoy watching both of them. I think I would come down that 
on the side of Messi as the better player. Yeah, I've always like I've always matches. had a preference to Messi personally because yeah, as you say, he's just so graceful to watch. I like like that. The first goal he scored against Real Madrid was a phenomenal goal where he just touched it past him. Like mm. he takes like to most people, if so they took that touch, knees. it's a heavy touch and no yeah. one's getting there. And most players, you think of like Walcott, incredibly fast. But yeah. it, naturally, when he's on the ball, he's not quite as quick because it's hard. But it's it feels like Messi doesn't slow down when he's on the ball. He's, he's just one one just, move. It's so quick. Like anyone else scores that goal how against his brain work that quickly. Yeah, it's, it's just, isn't it's it? I think Xavi, if Xavi and Iniesta in the past have said that Messi sees everything in slow motion. Oh, he yeah. can see in chaos and it's it's bizarre. Yeah. It's absolutely bizarre. But yeah, both are absolutely phenomenal players. And I think it's hard to say if one is better than the other. I think it genuinely is personal preference. Yeah. At the end, I think that's I all think, there yeah, is. And yeah, we're just you, very unless fortunate. You've seen them, unless you're maybe a Spanish journalist or something and you've seen them over a long period of time. Yeah. I think it was, if you're you know the casual British fan, I think it's, you've just basically got to pick what you prefer in a footballer. Yeah. And that's just pretty much it. But yeah. having seen both of them, I think I can... I can honestly say I prefer Messi as a foot. That's like, he's my sort of more cup of tea. The problem with with Ronaldo as well now is, is as he gets older, he's getting just put into up front, so he doesn't have that much influence. I know like Messi's been up front, he's had. Yeah. He, no, the other but, day was like. But it's just, the, all but it's just like the style of Ronaldo's plays, be, obviously being pace and skill. Yeah, it's always been that him on the wing, just, just doing step overs and, step and, and embarrassing like people. Yeah, um, and just having you know an unbelievable shot most of the time. So. Mm. Um, um, yeah, but it's it's different. It's obviously different things because it's like you think of how they became who they are. You know, Ronaldo was on the streets of Portugal, whereas he was obviously in Barcelona so mm. from the beginning. So it's like um, obviously, like yeah, but, you got. I think Messi comes from quite a poor part of Argentina as well, though. Yeah, 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 yeah probably. Yeah, but he got signed. Yeah, he got signed. Yeah, yeah he got signed. Yeah, he did so get signed. Helped, very early, yeah, yeah. I think he was. There's, you know, that's that. Na- there's natural yeah. talent. Yeah, and obviously, like Messi got nurtured anyway. But like he had Ronaldinho there. His yeah, first assist. Yeah. His first goal ever was assisted by Ronaldinho. I know if you saw Barcelona put a great video up on. I think they put it on Twitter, where it was just um loads of players like congratulating Messi on his 500 goals. And they're all like ex Barcelona players, yeah. other than Aguero. But they had like the names in that list as well. Yeah. Ridic- like Iniesta, Rina- Ronaldinho, Aguero. It was just it was, it was really cool though watching them. And then like Ronaldinho starts off the thing and he's like, "Yeah, I gave you your first goal, and then you've gone on to score these many." Yeah. So yeah, obviously, like he had a player like you can't. There's not many players you can go to a club. as a hot prospect, and then the current top star there will actually help him like go in and like even on the pitch. Then Ronaldinho was supportive of Messi and going no, like actually helped. Messi take his place, yeah, I which read, I think I read, is so rare to read, see yeah, from top footballer. He did Ronaldinho was the cover of Four Four Two a few months ago, and I, he was talking about his, you know, how he basically took the time to nurture Messi because he just they was giving him all this advice because he just knew how good he was going to be. Mm. And I think, like you said, obviously, Ronaldo was has got to the top through just sheer, sheer hard, hard work. work. You have to Messi respect Messi got through it. I mean, they're both extremely talented, so the talent's yeah, given. Yeah, but of Ronaldo's the separate is. He's got through sheer hard work, and no doubt Messi's worked hard as well. But Messi's been in an environment where he's just been allowed to kind of like naturally prosper, mm-hmm. whereas Ronaldo has had to work god hard, god damn hard it's to get to hard. even to Lisbon. Then when he was at Lisbon, showed United, and everyone always said at United how hard he worked in the gym, and he never took time off, and he was always yeah. staying late to training. So you, you know you've got to say fair play to there's so much respect for Ronaldo for yeah. getting to the top through just sheer determination yeah. that he wanted it more than anyone else yeah so that's, that's really good for him. yeah and even now like obviously some people like take his arrogance and sometimes he does come across that way but it's just his passion and he wants to win like you saw him after that game like I think there was a, I couldn't see the video because he got taken down but he was screaming something like fucking foul him or something along yeah. those lines at the end yeah he just do any, but, anything yeah for me as well I'm sure whoever it was don't definitely bottled so the chance to t- was, I think it oh, I can't remember who it was someone bottled a chance to take him out <laughs> I think it might have been Modric Plus, or Marcelo well, so, I think I Modric just, went for the foul Marcelo yeah, the sh- you just got to take him out of that position you just know something's going to happen it's that late on if you're not on a yellow card you should be <laughs> like it, you can't yeah Ramos, <laughs> Ramos knew what to do, yeah. do didn't he fucking hell he flew in yeah, moving on to another informed team, albeit slightly not as good, Hull. <laughs> uh, Hull only again. slightly. Only slightly. It's close, it's close. They played each other, I'm saying, no. I'm saying Yeah, we haven't seen, Hull, like, <laughs> has Messi ever scored against Hull? I, I don't think, think so. Has, no, so we, never, we don't know, we don't know. But, um, Hull obviously doing really well, unfortunately that came at Watford's expense on the weekend. 
which I'm sure we'll get into in a bit. But um, uh, it was two 0 You know, I mean, to be fair, do you see Hull's second goal? Talking of great goals, I've actually seen Messi would have been yeah, proud yeah. of Hull's second goal. Just falling from outside the box and rocket. Flukas, yeah, oh, Flukas was yes, it? Yes, I have seen that. Actually. I did watch <laughs> it was it. disgusting. Yeah. Great it was strike. Naughty. Oh, strike. But yeah, um, one thing. Obviously, when they came in, there was a whole like Paul Merson were going like. Why are they getting a foreign manager? He's like, anyone can do well at Olympiacos. Who's this bloke? And he's done them brilliantly there. And he's brought in... A, and the players he's brought in as well, a lot were kind of no-names. Like, we knew we knew Markovic from his Liverpool days. Ranocchia, some fans might know if they follow Inter. Or I knew him through career mode in FIFA, to be honest. So he was always a bit of a prospect. Otherwise, not really much there. But they've done really well. Like, um, I think the best example is Nias is got five goals in five games after and he was a laughing stock at Everton but he's absolutely balling at the moment he's so in, on form he's doing yeah, excellent I just think that's inc- like, it's inc- just an incredible contrast of what either a manager can do or, mm. or maybe it's just the team's tactics but um, you know that's sort of I don't know counter attacking it really is because like you get these players who are poor but like like Everton fans and Man U fans both hate, hated cleverly but he's fitting not, so well at Watford. Not, Watt not that. For, uh, the end, towards the end. I've championed him for a long time because uh, he's come through the system. Yeah. I think a lot of fans who want players to stay on who come through the system is sort of like, yeah. Yeah, but like, he fits in it. so well at Watford and just does a job. And it's like, sometimes you just, a player just has to find... You can't. Sometimes you don't know what it is. There's just something that clicks for a player at a certain club. There's, there's a lot of the time where I say, oh, you know, people say, oh, like, this guy is shit. And you think, well, no. I mean, 99% of the time, because there are exceptions through various ways, but there are exceptions, but 99% of the time, a player will never, ever get to the top of football yeah. if they're not quality. Yeah. Like, they have got that quality. There's absolutely no, no doubt now Nias is a very good striker. He might not be world class because at the end of the day at Everton he's like he would have been compared to Lukaku. Yeah, that's just unfair. You got no chance. Um, so I think yeah, that's obviously that's a that's kind of daunting to go to Hull. You think like I'm a, I'm my own man. I'm a good player. I'm gonna do well here. And Oscar, uh, not Oscar Garcia. Let's talk about him. Marco Silva. Uh, Marco Silva has um, given him the freedom to just go and be his friend. Do like you know sort of play him in a system which clearly works for him. So uh, you know he's obviously. A good, he's a good guy to have. Yeah, I mean, Markovic leaving Mersey's side as well, and he looks far better there than he did at Liverpool as well. Like, you always knew Markovic had talent, but he's absolutely, he looks great on the whole. I think, sometimes I think it can just be mental and less pressure. I think coming down from, when you're at a big club like Liverpool, you, you need to do well, and as soon as you start doing bad, kind of, you got off a clip. Like, look at Aspas, did so brilliantly last season at Celta Vigo, but at Liverpool, we couldn't take a corner. He was dreadful. <laughs> It's, 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 about, this season as well, uh, it's, yeah. it's just about time sometimes. Like because mm-hmm. um, as soon as you have that first Liverpool game, everyone's expecting you to you know, kick off and score a hat trick, right? but like mm. especially in the forward areas that you know they expect. You know, there is a high you, level you of want, expectation but, at big clubs. But, but the thing is, as well, some players do take longer at bigger clubs. And it, you know, if they if he was given a second season, you never know. You might have kicked on but <coughs> Kevin De Bruyne he then comes on he then comes on at Hull where he probably fancies himself to be the star player and so they they probably give a bit of extra but also have that um, like you know new lease of life as well yeah it's I mean and again like obviously the play, credit to the players for stepping up but of course credit does have to go to Silva because he's he's brought in a load of no, kind of no name players and a team that's in huge trouble and they're still in trouble. Don't get me wrong, like there's every chance they get They've relegated. Got a chance now. But they yeah, didn't they didn't have a chance have before, a chance before yeah. at all. There was absolutely no hope. And yeah, it it shows that sometimes we think like we say, like we a lot of the time the managers unfairly get blamed for when things are going wrong. You like it's the players, but at the same time, when a manager's gone in there, a clearly troubled club and has taken charge, they've lost. Livermore and Snodgrass were both key players yeah. in January and still managed to turn it around and actually play better. That's, it's the, credit. The only is. harsh thing I thought about, because um, who was there? Feeling, wasn't it? Feeling, yeah. The only <laughs> feeling I felt bad for him was yeah. that they didn't have a recognised striker, I don't think, because no. Hernandez was injured. And then as soon as they sack him, Hernandez is fit again. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah. these kind of things you feel like if mm. the if the, if the 
things have been slightly changed. Yeah. That could have been very different circumstances. Was it one of those he might have been injured and then as soon as he left? Maybe, it was maybe, maybe yeah. yeah. But I doubt that because Hernandez is such a quality player for them and, and I'm pretty sure he is. He's, he's, he's had, I feel like might not he kind like of had just yeah, some bad attitude that I think came from him before well, yeah. in the past. But I think sometimes to change a manager can be great and the any, if anyone knows about changing managers, it'd be me as a Watford fan. Because, you know, it's getting to towards that time of year where we take a job application. Change, change your manager. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to it's summon a, it. You actual, got... your, I mean, it's been a joke since we've, like, since we've known each other at yeah. uni. You were like, you were a perfectly stable club from, from, from as far as I knew before. And then it was like, as soon as, um, no, was it five in like... Five in one season. That wasn't yeah. all your own fault, was it? No, some seven. of that was out of our Still control. But, but, like, then, obviously, yeah, but, then, but then it has accelerated. Like, <laughs> and it was like five in in a season. Yeah. And, and like, was it like in four? Was it like really close? Like the actual... Somewhere. I mean, like, we hired... I can't even remember his name anymore. I never cared to learn his name. Yeah, some bloke from hey, Fulham. Yeah, we had... You had... Pepe Sonino, who was, he did a good job for us, but then had, like, some of the dressing room was split, yeah, so he went... Oscar Garcia, was it? I Oscar Garcia then point. had heart problems after, like, a couple you of weeks, Slavisa and he went... Yeah, Yakanovic. Yeah, before that... Yeah, before that, we had some bloke from Fulham who was, like, an assistant manager. I can't even remember his name. I mean, he was, like, manager for a day. They're like, yeah, you're our new manager. And then oh. we're like, we regret this, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're bringing someone else in. I can't remember who that was. Who was it? Well, it might have been five and two because like Sonino came in halfway through the season replacing Zola, <laughs> and then obviously it was yeah, Jukanovic who got us promoted, but we still didn't take on into the Premier League. <laughs> yeah, but then we took and then we took four of us just, out a year, just one a year, now, isn't it? It's like yeah, oh, literally you give is. a year. I want, then. I actually want Mazzari to stay. Funny enough, you know, we've been crap this year, but we can't be doing. It too badly if we're still 10th in the table. That's the thing, it's like... You're like, how, is the Premier League just getting know, worse? I don't or? know what you expect for a Watford. Two. That's it. Two. Like... You'll get the results. You're you're just... could, like, you could be doing worse and be Middlesbrough. Like, yeah. there, is, there is another level below it's how bad... Totally. Th- I think the most frustrating thing for Watford fans is, from from what I've seen, because you've been on telly like a few times this yeah. year, and from what I've seen of you, like, you're getting the results and... It's, it's that classic case of would you rather win ugly and get the results or would you play expansive football and the result mm. be up in the air this year you've been so boring like every time I watch you just I just don't <laughs> want to watch this but you're 10th in the Premier League yeah. and if you don't watch these games you'll just think right we're 10th in the Premier League who cares like we're losing our away games we're winning maybe not a lot of our home games yeah. so we've won our last three home games in a row now it's like it's yeah huge. if you're getting the results are you that bothered but yeah. again you are just so uninteresting. Because it's not like we played exciting football last year. I no, mean, if it wasn't for Egalo, yeah. we would have, we would have been dreadful. Yeah. Because Egalo like would scoop someone. Maybe Nightly Ball was right for what we talked about last year about maybe you do one scoop turn you're made, but Egalo would score after that scoop turn and yeah. put a defender on his ass. Like and that you, was fun. You put in those performances <clears> where like Liverpool, for example, where you absolutely smashed them at home. Like there was, you knew there was that. That's the most frustrating. Like, I'm not even a Watford fan. Yeah, I know. I said this before, but it's so frustrating watching Watford because you know that they've got that. Like you, yeah. you know that they've got like that quality in them. If the organisation's right, they can defend and they can be so exciting going forward. And they're just yeah. going to lose two 0 to Hull. You're but like, that's it. But it's like, how can we? It's obviously it's all there, and it just needs to be built upon. And then like Watford have always coped well with the constant change. Mm. But I feel like can we just give someone? I Give Mazzari a second the, chance. Yeah, and the problem is with I feel with definitely your forward area is that you rely so heavily on Deeney. Yeah. And how old is he? Like He's twenty seven, I think. Twenty seven, so not too bad. Yeah. But I feel like he's, the way he plays, he plays yeah. like a thirty year old to be honest. So. Yeah, yeah, of course he does. Um, he, he's not the most mobile, so, but he brings others in and yeah, I know no, I've I'm seen it a lot. I'm not gonna say no, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like you know, he's he's no good. He's definitely you know, yeah, he's great. But... And that's why he's on 100k a week. But <laughs> yeah. I feel like you you don't have a plan B. No. Because you don't have anyone on the bench. You don't have a, you know, a rash. I feel like so, I know... a bit lost when he's up front on his own. No, yeah. He just looks a bit like, oh, I don't know what to do. And he sort of panics. And, and like, we have had, I know I keep using it as an excuse, but like, I would love to see what more was like how we would play if we had everyone fit like yeah. success yeah, yeah. has obviously been on the bench for ages and like I saw, when I saw him in pre-season he looked amazing I was so excited to see him and he's just not got and when he has played okay sometimes he's like finishing through bad but he hasn't played all season so he hasn't had that flow but like he actually took a pot he pulled apart Middlesbrough yeah. when, we, when we faced them he just single handedly destroyed him and the likes of, and the Yang's fantastic I still love Roberto Pereira and I'm really like, I was watching I was doing the votes for the goal of the season and just working I got so happy just seeing Roberto Pereira in a Watford shirt because it's been so long. <laughs> and just seeing him like, 
go past Leicester and score a phenomenal goal. And, like, I'm really excited. We need him, is what we need to have to do, like, create a midfielder, which is why we got Zerati in January, and then he got injured as well. So, Mazzari's been unlucky. That, it's yeah. not... Obviously, there's still, like... We haven't had many defensive injuries, and our defence has been absolutely wank. To be honest. <laughs> like, it's not good. That's because you've had Eunice Cabal actually play, and so it's been... He's, he's, yeah, playing Eunice Cabal in a back three is terrible. Back four, manageable. But there's obviously no things there. But I just don't see... I keep seeing the talk about Ranieri coming in and at first I was like, oh, it's just the papers. Like, whenever we got promoted, whoever was good in the championship got linked to Watford because we were a new promote club. I'm like, oh, he's an Italian manager, so he's going to get linked to us because we always have Italian managers. Mm. But it's it's getting the rumours are getting stronger and stronger, and it makes me more and more worried because, yeah, he, what he did at Leicester was amazing, but I do not want him at my club. Really nice bloke, really great guy, fantastic what he did. For sort of, I for one, I don't think he'd do a good job. I generally don't. I think you, the state Leicester are in, <laughs> like without Kante, without that kind of special player, not, obviously not only down to Kante and not only down to Ranieri, but I don't think he would change much. I don't think... No. Like, no. I mean, what was it? There was, there's, Leicester was successful lumping it up to Vardy. But instead, it would be lumping up to Dini, which we've done for years anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing, and the thing I is, he was a culture, there's a culture last season at Leicester where they just, you know, it was, everyone was in you know, backing up each other and yeah. you know, it was just, you know, match day, there was a real good noise in the stadium and, and there was just a togetherness, you know, yeah. throughout. Whereas, I don't know whether you'd see that. Watford's Watford. full of egos, if I'm honest. No, there's definitely not, no, not even that though. There's not enough consistency with the team to know, to, to create that kind of atmosphere. So unless yeah, the, man, unless the manager big, can, well, unless well, the manager can do that on day well. one, then I, and I don't really see... Rianieri likes to change things. He likes to, and we saw at the end of his Leicester, you know, reign when it all started to go bad, that you know he, it just fell apart. And, and I said the other day that he might be a good fit, but I think I've changed my mind because on reflection, like it didn't, it didn't go well from at Leicester because he had no plan B. Yeah. Your problem is you've got no plan B. Yeah. yeah. Um. So he's not going to do anything else. So I, like I said, I still think he would be a good fit. Like, I think he might suit the club. Um, it's, but it's it'll last level. a year, it's, and then you'll get sacked. Um, so uh, yeah, maybe it's not yeah. the right. And it's the same short term thing. It's the same reason as well that Deeney didn't join Leicester despite them chucking money at him because he said no matter how well I play, it's unlikely we'll ever do anything to top that season. It's yeah. like okay, they did get into the quarterfinals of the Champions League and they did brilliantly, but they nearly got relegated at the same time. And it's yeah. sort of like you you're doing it's an impossible task. Like you can't beat that. You can't top that. And as soon as he comes to Watford there will be comparisons to Leicester and then he'll get berated by people going, Ranieri is just a one-off and we'll be continuously compared to Leicester and I, I don't want that. I don't think anyone, any small club would want that because it's not going to happen. We're not going to win the Premier League. <laughs> not for a bloody long time at least. I can hope and I will hope and I'll stay Brighton hopeful. Year, yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be Brighton next year. Which is, oh, we haven't even talked about that. Obviously, congrats to Brighton, our local team. We're all from University of Br- local teams in our uni because we all go to Uni of Brighton. They're up promoted, probably champions. Yeah, a round of applause for Brighton. Good I'm stuff. Going on Friday. So Put I your hands see. up for you Brighton. Yeah, no, I've got a ticket. I managed to get one ticket, so nice. it was just like that was. It was a tough, tough assignment to get that ticket, but uh, hopefully I'll just see Bristol City lose. Yeah, that's all. I don't want to. I don't care. It's crazy me. how far we've come it's from first year. Johnny talking about wanting Brighton to go down so Swindon can play Brighton, <laughs> and now you can yeah, be further, right. further apart. I knew this. I knew this is gonna happen. <laughs> 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 we can't. We can't. Like we can't do what your website did and completely ignore the relegation yeah. completely. <laughs> I like. I, I want to ask you about that. So if you didn't know, Swindon got relegated. Not that you wouldn't know if you went on their website because they didn't mention that they got relegated. On the website, yeah, so um, I mean, first po- things first. There's positive PR, and there's that. That was a joke. That's, That's just um, stuffed. It's just stupid. Own up to your mistakes is one of the first lessons of PRs. But yeah, obviously. Um, so your thoughts on the website not mentioning relegation? Um, yeah, like I said, there's, 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 you know, trying to keep your club in the light, and then there's, you just, you've got to face facts. Yeah. Like we can say, oh, we'll bounce back next year or something. Yeah, but you know you've got a. It just sort of said we've lost. You know, trying to keep our relegation fight alive. Like, fight's over, mate. It's been over since Tim Sherwood was there, but um, that's another story. So it is. But uh, please talk about it because um, it was even you said the other day, didn't you, that Tim? Well, like we saw it as well. That, like Swindon said, it was one of the biggest announcements in their history when they brought Tim Sherwood in, and then yeah, it was well, something I saw. Um, 
Dan, I can't see where. I think it was a couple of tweets people were tweeting because um, I think they. I don't know where it was. I don't know if it was an interview after the game or uh, whatever you did afterwards, and they were saying that Tim Sherwood was like, oh, that was it. No, it was um, goals on Sunday. Mm. He appeared on that. I didn't watch it because obviously you weren't here, so we didn't ask yeah. that. And, uh, uh, and they were saying that he sort of like glossed over it and was sort of just like, wow, you know, it was sort of, it wasn't really a job. It, you know, I was just there to help and sort of finalise deals. And he was blaming like, you know, the councillors. <laughs> I think he blamed like everyone apart from himself, and okay. and so some it's people were saying like he's literally said, you know, he's not committed this, to the cause. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. What are your um, thoughts on Tim Sherwood, Joey? <laughs> I don't know. This is all I, honest. Uh, this is all Johnny's honest opinion. <laughs> so there's there's no libel. Tim Sherwood can't sack us because this is genuine opinion. And as a Swindon I, fan, <laughs> Johnny's entitled to it. <laughs> I think I think it gets to like it gets to a point where. You know, like when you know when you're just so angry about something, it just yeah. becomes apathy. Yeah. Like you just you just got to laugh it because otherwise you will burst. Blood you have to laugh or else you'll cry. It's, yeah, it's just. Oh. Well, there's so much to talk about here. Let's let's take a baby. Let's try and keep it. Give us the section. Give us the highlights. Start low lights Tim Sherwood. <laughs> At the time, I don't know if you remember. I think we were in Newsweek. Yeah. At the time when they said that. I wasn't exactly thrilled. No. I didn't think it was a good. I didn't think it was a good idea. I was like, he doesn't. He's not a good manager. He's never been a good manager. He's got the highest opinion of himself. It's outside the club, though, it's hilarious. Well, that's right. And then we got made such a laugh in stocks. Everyone's like, oh, what's his actual job? And yeah. it was like, well, he's director of football, which under any normal circumstance would mean that he was actually doing a job. Yeah. You know, cut to goals on Sunday, and he's <laughs> he's trying to you know he's backtracking quicker than I don't know. Whatever, but. He's backtracking and um, he's saying, oh, it wasn't a job. I was just there to put some deals together, trying to just avoid, absolve himself of any possible blame. Um, And, you know, he was there to put deals together. And the deals that he he did, to be fair, were... I'll give him some credit. The deals that he has put together were largely very good. Like... Only one or two of them, maybe one of them, was just a total waste of time. Like, but these things happen. Mm. The rest of them, you're thinking, Dion Conroy, who we've bought, like, we've got him, he's class. Like, you know, I'm not sure really how we've got him, but he's he's a great person to have for the future. We've got Jesse Starkey, who is, you know, potential. I'm not, I don't think he's actually played for the club yet, so that was, that's a weird one. Right. You know, managing to get a Jose back, at the time looked like a great deal but he's not exactly been prolific since he's come back um, Charlie Colker again on loan from Chelsea he's very very good um, he's definitely got ability and you know the the king the jewel in the crown has been Rowan Ince I mean how on earth we've got him I'll never know he is class I, I spoke to a Brighton fan earlier um, and we were talking about him and I I don't understand why he wasn't played. I don't think he's maybe. I think we we sort of discussed the fact that he might need an arm around him to sort of get him back to his best. But yeah, that's that's sort of that's a different story yeah. as well. Um, yeah. So th- I just I think it was a waste of time having showed there, or maybe it wasn't under different circumstances. It was my biggest problem is there's a lot of. This is the main point. This is, I think, mm. the relegation... Look, relegation happens. Loads of teams get relegated for various different reasons. There's so much hyperbole going on around Swindon at the moment. Like, people are losing their shit over it. They're like, you know, we want power out. We want yeah. our Swindon back. I was I'd like to ask that. any, Swindon, chance, there, any right, Swindon fan, what Swindon, what Swindon do you want back? We haven't <laughs> been any good since 1969. <laughs> our biggest achievement is winning the League Cup. It was 50 years ago. What, Sw- what Swindon do you want back? We're a tiny League One club. Like, we've never done anything... You don't support Swindon because you want glory. You support them because they're a hometown team, pretty much. Like, no one supports Swindon because they're good. Mm. You know, when these fans singing, we want power out, you know, and power, we think you're a C-word and stuff like that. It's like, he, he's um, completely wiped all the debt. He's making sure that we're staying above 
like you know, so we're National making League profit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're ma- he's he's saying making sure that we're staying above like above board yeah. financially mm-hmm. by paying the losses out of his own pocket. Mm. If our fans think that he's a not very nice yeah, man, scammy. I'd love to know what they think of people that have, you know, um, ruined of ruined Leighton Orient. Yeah, it's like. What do you want from this guy? He's he's running like the the yeah, he's it seems run, like Coventry. He's running Coventry. the club sensibly on a financial level, which in this day and age, I don't think there's a lot more you can ask for. No. The only the only shortcut that he's taken, and it is my in my personal opinion, and I, I think there would be maybe ninety five percent of the Swindon fans would disagree, or potentially not agree with my point of view. But the main reason that we got relegated. Is because Luke Williams is our manager. He might like last year. He was a good coach under Cooper and stuff. By all accounts, you know, he was apparently the brains running the operation. I really fucking doubt it because he <laughs> does. He he does. He might be like a, a friend of the players or something. But he's just he's so he's so. Um, I can't think of the word, but his his tactical knowledge is so poor. Like he, he's so unimaginative. Like the substitutions he made on Saturday were an absolute disgrace. Like they were terrible. I think who was it? Someone was having an absolute shocker of a game. Like they were just useless. He's just, just you know, take him off and bring on a striker. And I think he took off our right back. Like right. I think he took off Dabo, who was playing really well. Like him and Brophy were on down the wings, you know, running at players and getting crosses in. Yeah. And he took him off for another centre mid. So we had, we were playing like three, four, <laughs> three, but like a really wonky one. It was. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, I think Williams was the crux of the that's the only shortcut that Power's taken. He's the, he's wrong. That is he's taken the cheap option. I don't really yeah. like using that phrase, but I think he's taken the cheap option. Um. And we've got we've we've had a manager in charge who just isn't good enough. Quite frankly, you can just dress up however you want, but he's just not he is not good enough. Yeah. And that's the only thing that I I can't I really cannot understand people's frustrations with power. I, I don't know what more you want. Right. Like I from as a chairman, you want someone to run the club financially stably. Yeah. And then and you've said to me so many times you've yeah. got a good squad. You've got the to leave one. You've got enough. a really good squad. It was perfectly good enough. It was just the, we were in we were in a hole where you know we got ourselves into a situation where we were never going to get out of it. Um, so the, that that squad basically had no chance of getting out of this situation because of the leadership. Like you could tell that they were devoid of confidence, and yeah. it goes with the manager and also our fans because ninety percent of our fans are fucking idiots. Like just it's every club, you just you just I, I swear I just tear my tear my hair out. Like listen to the chance of. You know, we want power out and mm. we want our Swindon back. And you think, right, if I was power, I'd say, um, so I've cleared your club of debt. Um, you know, we're we're financially stable now. We've got a good team for the future. Like, we'll probably just be in League 2 for a while. Um, and then, you know, who knows? And if you think he's whatever and, you know, we want our Swindon back, you're like, what Swindon's that? We've gone into administration like three times. We go into administration one more, once more. We're gone. End yeah. of story. There is no Swindon Town Football Club. No. What's like? What Swindon Town do you want back? Like, what are you looking at? I just find it very strange that you like you say you say you went for the cheap option with Williams, but then you brought in someone like Shearwood. It's like we, why didn't you just bring a manager in? It feels like you like, just didn't have anyone actually Sherwood. responsible. He's, he's, not, literally, he's he? literally that's okay. the thing. This is why he's getting out of it because he's saying we bought in Sherwood and he's not on a contract. He's yeah. literally been bought. He basically. There's something seen must be going under the table. He's seen because, Swindon because as he's a hobby. Not, he's, like not he's, getting, he's not getting paid at Aston Villa anymore, they say. So no. where's he getting his income from? I don't know. I mean, he's got enough money TV appearances. to buy, I don't know. But he's basically seen Swindon as a hobby and he's not taken us seriously. He's put a few deals together. But he was, take, you know, at the start, he was there as... He was supposed to be in charge of all football-related activity. About three or four months ago, that was like... He was. He wasn't doing any interviews or anything like that. And then three or four months ago, it was given put back. In, Williams was put back in charge of it. So it was like, what are you even here for? Yeah, because mm-hmm. like I remember seeing him like storming down like the, the tunnel and stuff during games. So he was obviously emotionally. He was just trying to show. Him, I think he was just so. trying to show like he's he's involved, even though yeah. he isn't. Like he was just trying too hard. Yeah. The bottom line. The bottom line is for Swindon at the moment. Look, we've gone down. It happens. I can live with it. it. Whatever. We don't have a good season, but it's just sort of 
you know, those crinkles that you need to smooth out. Yeah. The, the saddest day, thing, I think, is because you've gone from almost getting promoted to yeah. then losing a couple of players. But that was the thing. We, massive, we massively well. overachieved then. Like, I know there weren't that many good teams in League One, but with the budget we had and the players that we had and, with, you know, with the manager and everything like that, yeah. it was a massive overachievement to get to a player final. It was sad to lose the way we did, but I'm glad we didn't go up because Preston are holding their own and quite... You know, well deserved they've got everything set up yeah. perfectly well there if we'd have gone up I'm really you've got fear for our future like yeah. I, you're it's looking tough. at Yeovil like yeah. Burton type what well, look at Doncaster happen. Doncaster have gone from a yo-yo club between Championship and League 1 yeah. to yo-yo between League 1 and League 2 now yeah and I, I think you know you, you possibly had to fear for our future but, but you'd have liked I would have thought more players might have stayed and you would have had a bit more of a stable I think it's because you've lost. I think it's diff- lost it's always players. so difficult because there were so many players that were just clearly better than yeah, yeah. what we were. Like if we didn't go up, you knew they were gone, and it was fair enough. It's the same with Nathan Thompson's going to leave this year, and Lawrence Vigory is going to leave. You yeah. can't blame them. Like Nathan Thompson's a Swindon lad. Like he's born here. You know, he's played from his boyhood club, but quite frankly, he should have left years ago because he's yeah. way better than us. Like he can play in the championship, no problem. Yeah. He's way yeah. better. Yeah, when I saw, when I went to the game review, he was fantastic. He's, he's, he's a, a, he's a he's good defender. Yeah, he's yeah, just, he is. I think uh, if you like to to look looking forward, um, to, if you take all emotion out of it mm. and you just like, think logically, think with your brain here instead of your heart. As a Swindon fan, we've got a chairman. Whatever you might think of him, and if it's negative, you're wrong, because I mean. He's probably this is potentially libelous, but he's pro- he is probably and he definitely always certainly is a slightly shady character. Like there's things that I think that it would probably be best off that we just didn't know about him because I think there's skeletons. Just, he hasn't had like clean set like banning the media and stuff. Skeletons it's just it's not a good idea yeah. as well. No, I'm talking like bad things. Okay, I was trying to cut you um, up, but yeah, no. <laughs> he's um, I think I think there's. There's maybe skeletons in his closet, but at the end of the day, as a business, as a businessman, he's running a football club, like on a you know we're not losing loads of money, like we're close to breaking the even, which as a football club is just kind of impossible. We like at the chairman, we've got he's running the football club sensibly. He's got plans <coughs> for the future. To, I mean, however slow they might happen, he's got plans to. Make you know have a proper training ground with proper facilities and in a long time you know it's gonna it's gonna take yeah, time but football fans don't have the time this is why everyone's getting impatient now he's got plans to grow the club in ten years I think we will have made strides it might not be as quickly as everyone wants to but we'll like we are going in the right direction it's just quite slow and you know things take time it's not just as easy as waving a magic wand yeah. and we've got a new magic we've got a new training ground and we've got yeah. a new stadium and yeah. You can't turn around to a football club and be like, should it be really nice this season? A proper training ground. Yeah. You're not going to have that. Like, Click. Oh, you know what? There it is. We should have a 50,000 seat stadium. Yeah. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't. That's not how football works. And like, his, his targets are realistic as well, by the sounds of things. Like, he's not, yeah. like, you've seen some clubs where like, they'll be in League 2 and like, we're going to be a huge Premier League team. And you're like, maybe it does happen for some think... teams, but you can't just outright do that. You have to take the small steps first. I, I don't like that. Uh, one A journalist that used to work at, uh, um, at the Swindon Advertiser and um, I don't know if I mentioned his name Sam Moore said mm. now works at yeah. the Daily Mail yeah, yeah, yeah. and he wrote a piece the other day about Lee Power which I thought was basically completely wrong and completely unfair I didn't think it was true at all I mean he's entitled to his opinion mm-hmm. so you know whatever but I think there's like I said earlier there's so much hyperbole going on around Swindon that people are getting uh, he sort of mentioned the fact that um, you know Power's making the fans turn apathetic towards Swindon. It's like it's almost like instead of getting angry and going, oh, "This is a disgrace. We don't deserve to go down." People are going, "Oh well, doesn't matter." And and I just don't think it's fair. I don't. He. I don't. He's not doing anything wrong. This is what confuses me of all the anger and all the negativity towards him. I, he's not doing anything wrong. He's he might not be doing it quickly, but he's taking the right steps to improve the club. Yeah. You know, we're going to lose assets. We've got no tangible, like, we've got really no tangible assets anymore in terms of the playing staff. So this is, it's going to take a long time to get out of League Two. But, you know, we're going to lose Vigory, we're going to lose Obika, we're going to lose Nathan Thompson and they'll all go for money or whatever. But we'll just, there, we could, it could be worse, you know? Yeah. Like, we've got a football club, it could be worse. Yeah. We Clear, could be late yeah. in Orient. Clearly your fans just obviously wanted him just to spend the cash. 
I not think worry that's, about yeah, it. Like, he, he, what, everyone, they wanted to see a huge investment in the team, and you know, <laughs> unless you're doing okay, and you like unless unless you stayed up or you know were mid table, yeah. you, would, you would have got away with that, and people would probably yeah. be fine with it. But because it's gone so badly this season, <laughs> that it you know people just want to want to. I don't, yeah, like at the level, you're absolutely. not going to get that from any chairman yeah, either. People, you're not going to get like all the an just wants to from come Dubai in. to come yeah, and give you it. like League One. Everyone just wants to, you know, it's a, not a Chinese happen. investment company, as is now the sort of you know the, the thing at the moment, to come in, buy the club, and just spend spend our way out of trouble. Yeah. And it's just it's not going to happen with a club like ours. We just need to accept the fact that we're a small like hometown team. You support, you just kind of get around it, and we need to be supporting what we've got and making the best out of it. Um, and the the fans are really letting the club down at the moment. I think, and there's it's really not as bad as everyone thinks. Yeah. I just it's just not that bad. Like everyone said to me, you know, you start saying to me, oh, "I'm sorry for your loss" and things like that. And it's like, no, it's not. I only said it because uh, like, no, I, no, I didn't say. It. I just no, said no. my thoughts of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this was, someone else said it to me as well. Like it's just, oh, you know, because they expect me as quite a passionate person to be really upset over it. And I was like. Honestly, I don't think it's that bad. No, but like, also because just any relegation is yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm expecting Forest Green to have plenty of ups and downs yeah. in the future. If you so get relegated, like I said, it's, not, I, well. it's, not, ideal. <laughs> it's, it's not, not, not ideal. It's not great. It's not ideal, and I'm not happy about it, don't get me wrong. Of course. But the, like, it could be worse, and like, we've been down to League 2 before, we've still got a football club. Like, I always support, like, everyone at Swindon will always support Swindon as long as they live, because it's our... Uh, Team, yeah. You don't like. I don't. I. I just don't think. I don't know what people expect. Yeah. I think you know our playing staff is okay. It's perfectly exciting. We've got. We've always had a that knack of signing non-league players or signing sort of rough diamonds or players that aren't given a chance at other clubs, turning them into quality, and then selling them on for a massive profit. That's just basically been our thing. Yeah. Um. And I don't mind that. I. I like that as a yeah, person. Um, so That's I why think, you've been in the I think one for the future. Search. Yeah. I think for oh. the future. We just need to take stock and think. I need power needs to, maybe be a bit more opaque with everything, like what he's doing. Because I think sometimes people are getting a bit frustrated because that he's saying, he's he's maybe keen to keep things a surprise or he's not sure and he doesn't want to jinx stuff or I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have a plan yet, but he doesn't yeah. want people to worry. Yeah, of course. Um, and he's he's sort of maybe needs to be a bit clearer of his answers. But I think going forward. Everything is going to be fine. We just need a new manager, like a, like we need a proper manager, like someone who someone knows, who's like someone who knows, knows lower experience. league football, and who can yeah. just sort of who's got like a bit of something about him, like just to kind of get us going yeah. forward. And I think the team that we've got, he's, a perfectly good uh, Is Steve Cottrell still at Bristol City? No, he got sacked it? ages ago. Yeah. I won't want him there. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Can he open? Oh uh, yeah, people have been sort of joking about that. I mean, I don't know. Well, there's talk of like I kept seeing that sort of fan earlier saying about like fan ownership at Swindon, and they're trying to like the supports group is trying to get that going. Yeah, it's like, like is I'm that part good of idea? that like part of the uh, STFC supporters yeah. trust, um, and it's just it's more about like we want to buy the stadium. I think is the sort of the council owns it at the moment. Okay. Once we buy it, it would be easier to renovate and develop, really it. develop it and stuff like that. Um, and then it, it it's just more of an insurance net if you know anything does happen like if power just up, up sticks and leaves yeah. which to be honest I would be perfectly in, like, in his own rights to do if the fans are treating me like they're treating him at the moment I'd be like see you later because yeah. I'm going to like if you want me to leave I'll leave and it'll ruin the club but yeah, yeah. I think administrate like if he's keeping you financially sound as a chairman I don't think you yeah. can ask for too much I'm more sure what I'm... because administration is much scarier than just bad performances yeah. and going down Teams season. lose all the time. Yeah, teams, teams lose. Teams should never go up, up and down in leagues. That shouldn't happen. <laughs> I I saw it from what, but like getting yeah, I've sort of the same few when we got relegated from the Premier League. We had a terrible season. It wasn't enjoyable at all in the Premier. League. Mm. You just kind of numb to it. It's sort of like okay, but it, what was scarier, and like we'd been in a relegation battles before in the Championship, but what was more scary is going into administration, the club not existing at all. Yeah. You, I'd rather be in a League Two. Yeah, because you've still got a club. You've yeah. still got a team to support and you need to get behind them in these moments. I think my, my biggest, my biggest, two biggest sort of uh, talking points for me would be new manager. Absolutely, we need a new manager. I don't think Williams is good enough. I just don't. He might be a good coach. I just don't think he's a good enough manager. There's something wrong with the managerial setup at Swindon. That's, that's, 
the main root of our problems. The second thing I would say again is to the fans, you know, when they're singing, we want us to win the back. You just think, what are you talking about? So I'd like to talk to these people and generally just ask them, have a conversation and just say, what do you mean? Yeah. Because we've never had a good team. Like about nineteen twelve, I think we had someone. We got to the FA Cup semi final. You were in then the Premier League at one point, right? Then nineteen sixty nine, we won the League Cup, and then nineteen ninety three, we got to the Premier League. There's three things in about hundred. Well, we've been alive about hundred and thirty years. Yeah. Give or take, I'm sure it's about eighteen seventy nine. So whatever that is. Yeah. Um, we've we've had three notable kind of periods of time. Like, what are you talking about? The fans need to get real. I think they there's some absolutely deluded fans at our club. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, uh, you know, to, to kind of round off, I think relegation is really not that bad. It could be worse. Spot on. Yeah. No, you said your piece, and you know, I can't disagree. Edit all the shit. You said all your stuff, and we don't want any you, of it. <laughs> you'll start ranting, then I'll just cut it, and then just go to the end. <laughs> Yeah. This might be slightly lighter, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, to, you know, you can yeah. get relegated, and that's the end of it. <laughs> yeah, um, did you have questions? Yeah, I've just got a few random things just to see. You might think um, nothing of it. It's just some things that came to my mind over the weekend, and I just thought, just maybe have a quick conversation. So, um, did you watch the Tottenham-Chelsea game? Or have you seen yeah, the highlights? Yeah. yeah. What did you make of Moses sort of fall dive. To, dive. To, to, to Sutton because yeah. I was trying to work out for ages what made that not a dive because from the commentary they were like well that's definitely a penalty and it was like yes Sun was ridiculous coming out like that but yeah. surely it was a dive because he didn't yeah. touch it Moses is definitely looking for it isn't he because he's, he's not a, Moses isn't going he, anywhere and he, not, he does the classic knocks the ball away then goes into him and like he was some was ridiculous going in, but he didn't actually go in that you, quickly. No, you can understand him trying to get a bit of a, you know, just leaving a leg there. Yeah. He didn't even leave a leg. He just jumped you over. He literally it. jumped over him. So if someone jumped over a player, whether he'd come recklessly or not, it's not a pen. So yeah. I was like, I found that really interesting that more I maybe more people. Then you had Coutinho, there, didn't but, you, in the weekend who um, got taken out, like legs taken out and he stayed on his feet. Yeah, and then people were saying, Oh, he could have given a penalty. Like, no, he fucking couldn't. He had a shot. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I, just, I just wanted to, that, whether, whether it was just me, but I'm glad you no, guys agreed. No, that I, Moses thing, I, I think you thought. can't, I don't think you can win on that one because at the end of the day, like people saying, oh, you know, he was about to take, you know, he would have taken him out had he left his leg there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, I sure, disagree on that as well because he could have just, just, just how, wrapped up I just don't though. understand how it can be awarded as a penalty when he didn't touch him. Those, like, those sort of things will be interesting when video technology comes in because in the referee's defence and like at the moment yeah. we have to take it in yeah. it looks absolutely stone yeah. it does yeah. you always think though in, in like they sort of said in commentary as well like you have to make such a big deal of going down to make sure you get the penalty yeah. it, like if he'd have just ran on and he could have just kicked Son and it would have made it made for a more natural looking fall because he's just sort of gone over and his son's come in and he's just sort of hit the deck. And the way he just stayed on the ground, it was like, please give away. And the Son was doing like, this. As soon yeah. as Son starts you know, waving his hands, going, no, 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 it wasn't a penalty. The ref's was, like, it almost yeah. certainly was a penalty. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. he, it's almost like, you know, the you could get sent off for intent. Yeah. So I think giving a penalty for in, the intent of the tackle, because effectively it would have been a yeah. foul. You know, if he'd left his leg, I think yeah. it's, it's but fair If Moses enough. had the ball at his yeah. feet, he would have got the ball, though. It was just Moses did the typical thing of yeah. knocks the ball away and just takes I the don't challenge. Th- I, don't th- like, I don't like, dive. I don't cause... like diving and simulation. And, uh, you know, that's obviously... You, yeah. you don't want to see that. You don't want to see people looking for dives, but it was almost like you knew it was a penalty anyway, so you didn't yeah. really have yeah. to take the contacts. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. So... Yeah. It's, it's hard, and then like players get criticised, don't they? And like, well, have he gone? If he didn't yeah. stay on his feet there, he got the pen. I mean, a lot of the, like... ex, the the interesting thing is that a lot, of, a lot of the fans are saying, "Oh, that was a dive, I didn't like it." And a lot of the ex players were saying, "No, it was definitely a penalty. He was about to take the contact. Basically, it was the right decision." I think that a lot of the time is telling. Whenever the ex players, the majority of the ex players are saying something, yeah. that's when you think, "Fair enough." That's that's basically just the way it is in the game. Mm-hmm. So, for me, I would say he was. He he knew the contact was coming. It was probably the right decision. Is that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, was I on that one? diving thing actually? Did I see the Celtic 
<laughs> I still haven't actually. I heard about this. It is the worst dive I've ever we seen in my life. Period. Yeah, she does. Pretty much. Okay, so we just watched it again, and I mean, you know, you know, you know the phrase. He leapt like a salmon. Yeah. He's oh, flopped oh, like shocking. a salmon. Yeah. <laughs> <Shocking>. <laughs> but he's the ball's touched his foot, and he's got that contact, and just. Flop. Like that, it's obvious, that isn't was, it, from the way he flops? So like, how are you the, giving that? Like I just sort of said about he he thought he knew the contact yeah. was coming, and it didn't. As come. a defender, yeah. and then he I looked like, like a dick. I would have been distraught because you've absolutely played him there by stopping yeah. having yeah. the discipline to you know stop taking him that one. The work, and then he's still gone over and got the penalty. Because you've got no reason to tackle him next. He's going towards the like out of the yeah. box. Yeah. I like, couldn't be going further out of the box. It's bad in so many ways. For, firstly, for the player, because it's the worst dive of all time ever. It's also it really subtle. bad for the linesman and the referee, because both were about That's 10 right yards right. away. They were literally 10 yards away, and he can't... Mm. Like, how neither of them have spotted that is just... Who is it against it again? Is sad. Ross County. Ross County, so like, yeah, it was Ross County player. That, and then... Um, I mean, it's the only way any team's going to get a point And then Scott Scully, Brown apparently. got sent off for a challenge... For a slightly robust challenge, I didn't think it was that bad. I thought it was a yellow card. That's part of Scottish football, but, um, isn't it? Watching Celtic Rangers, hilarious. That was a great game. Also, the Scottish Cup semi finals, uh, I watched uh, Hibs Aberdeen. That was a great game. Yeah. I loved watching that. That was so entertaining. <laughs> but I saw bits of Rangers Celtic, and I just look up and it would just be a crunching challenge. And I, I would just yeah, like, I, I didn't, didn't control myself one. from laughing. It was I hilarious. I love Scottish, watch Scottish <laughs> Cup games. It's so much fun to watch. Well, I've only ever really watched the Cup mm-hmm. games, but oh, that's so good. What's that next point? Yeah, um, next yeah, I wanted to know, did you hear Jeff Stelling's rant on... Which one? Um, First and second Dave one. Jones. Did he, was there two? There was two. There was one. one that he didn't... Maybe, really... If you haven't got I it, haven't you know. need to find it then. Whew, Stelling, not a happy bunny. Not happy bunny. Well, mm-hmm. You're not taking was... relegation as well as you have, Johnny. <laughs> 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 he's not taking it what in What I find interesting is that he's obviously in soccer Saturday isn't that professional in yeah. terms so they, they obviously do do quite a lot of rants but like that is like he's it's just heavy like his professional I'm surprised sort of his bosses didn't have a word just him, lost the, absolutely lost it but they probably love it because it gets more coverage doesn't it yeah. but it's just I thought he was interesting like you said he is the president and I just wanted to know what your reaction was yeah, it's interesting he's, that he's like he's, he's using his own point of power, isn't he? Saying like walk now, like because he knows every football fan in the country is watching, and it gives the and everyone it, only cares about Hartley. It gives the players no choice; they literally have to sack him whether they wanted to keep him or not. And it's like, is that really fair? I don't like, think whether that's he's his level or was it? I think he's no, right though. Whether yeah, whether he's right or not, it's like, is that really fair to do to someone? Like they had they sacked him two days later. Yeah. It is a bit of a. It is. It's him obviously being a passionate fan. And that is his jet, but he's also president. So I guess he has more so say in the club. More, but it's him using his his power, more, his position um, of power to decorum. I don't. Yeah. yeah, I thought he went, went uh, sort of went over the line. I thought there whether he's right or wrong. I just thought you know, I, I don't know, it's a bit disrespectful. And I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, just just because of his position um, within the club. And if he had a problem, he should have just gone to them and had a chat rather than rant in the middle. Like, yeah, there's time and place for things, isn't there? But, but, but I guess he, when you're taking sky the... bosses, fact, if his sky bosses are all right with it, um, I think I think I think, no, I think I think I think that's not really too much of a problem just because of the sort of the way the show is on yeah. Saturday. But I think just because of his position in the club, um, then it sort of just put, you know put them against the wall. I'd say fair play to him. To be honest, I think fair enough. He's gonna do it if you've got that power. He's, I'm he's got that. He's got that soapbox to stand on, so he's done yeah. it. And do how often? I swear, every time. If I had the power to get rid of Williams year. by sit, saying, absolutely screaming at him on television, I would 100 percent do it. So <laughs> that's fair right. enough. I'm, that's I'm right. well on his side there. Yeah. Right, my last thing was, yeah. I was listening to the Burnley United game on the radio, and they had yeah. Ian Osmond on there, and they thought um, the second goal, which was. I think awarded to Rooney in the end. They yeah, thought he yeah. might be going for an own goal. I thought it was an own goal as well. And yeah. he was saying, I saw that he well. was saying that why an own goal is given because defenders don't want it. So give it to the the person that struck the ball. So I wanted to know: Do you think own goal should go to the opposition player that the last one to touch it? We haven't. The striker hasn't technically like well. Because, yeah, because defenders, yeah, but defenders don't want it. You don't, so, but... So, I don't like, want a red card. doesn't mean I'm not yeah, going to get it. it. You know what I mean? No, exactly. that's, no, but like Stockdale, he didn't want it, but like the shot was good enough to deserve a goal. So like, why why not just automatically leave it to the last person that touched it on the opposition's team rather than the same team? I just wanted to know what... Yeah, it's just banter. Thought. 
Uh, and yeah, are funny. I think there's two two sort of fairly clear arguments there. It's either no sod off, I don't want a red card, but I might still get one. Well, we're not talking about or, red cards. We're just no, talking about just, talk, means... just talk about own goals. You don't there's, want a no goal. one thing. No, but it's, about, if it happens, it happens. I'm just talking about things you don't want. If you could, one. if you could change own goals quite easily, because you could do that quite easily, just give it to the last person that touched it. On yeah, well, so so it's a bit like Rocket League, and there is yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. whereas it's really annoying though, because like, what if someone's because if it's the last opposition player that's touched it, right? Say you. The team clears it up, and then the others, and then say say it's Watford scoring an own goal in the end. So, Man United boot the ball up. Rooney boots the ball up to no one. Watford just defend, take it their time, passing it around the back, and then suddenly someone pressures one of the defenders, and he passes it back to Gomez, and Gomez completely yeah. misses the ball. And it's been ten minutes since the Man United touched the ball. Rooney goal. <laughs> and it's a Rooney goal. You know what I mean? So it's it's still That'd he can't give that to Rooney. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, there's a, maybe another argument, maybe to say that there are certain circumstances where that is that might be a good idea because I think maybe with deflection, the print chart, yeah, like the deflection yeah. one's race maybe like it's going wide but it gets deflected in. You've got kicked off and it was kind of a shot yeah. but yeah. it's gone in. And then the print chart one where it's hit the post sort of hit someone else and gone in. Yeah. Like maybe there's an argument for that, but then there's obviously certain arguments where if you maybe put a cross in, it's swinging away and someone just spoons it off the back of their head, then that's just yeah. your own bloody fault. Yeah. Um, so uh, it depends on like yeah, where it's you, like you had to feel for Stockdale but at the end of the day the ball's not going into yeah, the net until where it touches you, where it where do you draw the line it's tough where do you draw the line and then yeah and then if you start respect. saying that's not an own goal then, and then, but some are still it's goals, like the one people get pissed yeah, I've, well, it's, that's why you just have a general the one is where you're not sure you have own goals or you just don't have own goals yeah. at all and maybe so on the on the side of caution if you're not like if it's definitely not going in then it's an own goal if if you're not sure then it's possibly maybe there's, a, give the there's a rule to give it, yeah, the strike of the benefit yeah. of the doubt and just give it to him instead. I just thought it's, yeah, it's quite but, interesting. Um, it's interesting, but it's, I yeah, it's, it's, it's there for a reason. It's talking and, point, and yeah, I guess. It's yeah. like, because on the record books, does it really matter how many own goals a defender scores? Like, yes, so it's, we all it's need like, to know about Richard Dunn's yeah. record. <laughs> Jamie Carragher, et cetera. Or that amazing Jay, uh, Walters game where he like, scored an own goal or two maybe and missed a penalty as uh, well. Yeah. That was legendary. Thank you, John Walls, for that. And then uh, to finish things off, bringing the quizzes back because it's been a while. Yes, I haven't done a quiz in too long. But I've got I've got two for you, and I'm going to give you the choice. So there's one that's in the style of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Oh, I love that. So um, it's a great start. It's a trying to get start. money. So 15 questions. I think I got up to 4,000 when I tried it earlier. This is a strong but start. I will say that some of the questions are. Are we working Old. against each other or as a team? Uh, for that, you, I'd say work celebrity. as a team. Celebrity, it's like... Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, um, it's the couples edition of who I got. Mr. 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 Yeah, exactly. Or the other one is just um, name the Premier League top scorer for each age. So who had the most goals as a 16-year-old in the Premier League nah, up all the way up to 40? Yeah, we go for that. Yeah, that one was... So as I say, it is a bit... I think it's from 2012... Uh-huh. So some things may be out there, but you've always got four options so you can probably guess Just with guess, things. Yeah. So, Tough. so uh, for one hundred pounds, I need the music. I'll be. I won't bother. I'll be. I got to four pounds. <laughs> 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 if I get to four pounds, <laughs> <laughs> who, who scored them? Premier League's first ever goal. Oh no, this one. Teddy Sheringham. Oh no, it's not. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mention that, but um. So, and there's, there's no lifelines, by the way. We haven't got the technology, oh, to be bizarre. honest. Sorry. I'm, no, fuck that. I'm ringing, I'm ringing my, my fake side. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, but okay. You shouldn't need it I'm for this. Google, Who is yeah. the all-time top premiership scorer? Is it Alan Hansen? Oh, Alan Partridge? <laughs> Alan Shearer? Shit! Or, <laughs> <laughs> or Alan Titchmarsh? Oh, it's got to be Titchmarsh. Uh, <laughs> Alan Shearer. It's C. Alan Shearer. Oh, £200. <laughs> Which team has won the most Premier League titles? Blackburn Rovers, Tottenham Hotspur, no. Bolton Wanderers, oh, come on. or Manchester United? Come on, I thought that was going to be harder than that. It's early, it's early days. It's only 200 to get up to a million. So. Manchester United. Manchester, the Manchester. Totally Bolton. <laughs> and now, yeah, this is where you can see the kind of, you can see a bit of the age in this quiz. Bolton, Who is the most expensive player bought by a Premiership club? Is it Fernando Torres? Lee Dixon, Jamie Redknapp, or Chris Sutton? Uh-uh. Well, obviously it's Fernando <laughs> Torres. <laughs> yeah, out of those uh, lines, it's Fernando Torres. But he's definitely not the most expensive anymore. No. 
Uh, which team has not played in every Premiership season? So this is from 2012 it's onwards. Not played, okay. Because there's, there's A, Fulham, B, Everton, C, Aston Villa, and D, Arsenal. Oh, shit, that's tough. Not played uh, in... I would say Fulham. Who was the list of Everton? Yeah. I'm sure Everton are like up there either they've been in or they're up there with the most so they haven't been yeah. relegated since like seventy something or eighty something, I think. Yeah. Good for them. It is for them. Yes. That's, a, that's five hundred pounds in the one, I'm nervous. No, for one thousand pounds. Is really this, is this the banker? Is this like well, we get to take it home if we want to bottle it? Yeah, it is. You will say like you know before. Let's say you whoever you've earned, you got so five hundred. Okay. This all is right. for a thousand. This is, kind, this is for charity. Yeah, so it's all going. It's all it's charity, charity. Yeah, charity. it's all going to Swindon. It's not actually going. <laughs> oh, maybe we should put it into the. Uh, this the, isn't the, real money. The Watford manager fund <laughs> to find a new manager. Hey, we could do with that. There's people lining up for that job. Probably not. So, uh, who's made the most Premier League appearances? Is it A, Emil Heskey, B, Gary Speed, C, Ryan Giggs, or D, Nicky Butt? Probably Ryan Giggs. Giggs, yeah, the it? most. It's Giggs. Giggs. That's what I would have said. It is. I was nervous. Four you said those first yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's getting it's getting real now. It's getting real. Okay. Who scored the Premiership's first ever goal? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's Brian D. Are you sure it's not Ian Wright, Teddy Sheringham, or Tony Yaboa? Tony Yaboa scored one of the best ones, but it is, <laughs> it is Brian D. Brian D. Now, here, this is where I got caught out. So, um, £4,000. Oh, nervous. I still don't know if I even got this right in the end when I tried it again. So, which team were part of the inaugural Premiership season? Right. A. Luton Town. B. I don't think they've been the Premier. Notts County. Never been the Premier. C, Norwich City. Probably. Or D, West Ham United. Oh, shit. I don't think Luton Luton or Notts County have ever been in the Premier League. The inaugural Premiership season. So that would rule them out. I'm sure Power played for Norwich around that time. Uh, West Ham. Where did West Ham... I don't know. You want to go to Norwich, don't you? I don't think so. Oh, no. I don't know. I'm trying to think because when have West Ham been rele- have been relegated recently, and it was like they went down to the Championship and came back up. Because when did they? When did they have what's his face? Lampard. No. I want to say West Ham. If I was, if I was playing as a man, I'd say. West I just realised as well. Is I'm going to pause it because I just realised there's a time limit. <laughs> we had like two go. minutes left. Yeah, go go, Johnny's then. So what are you saying? I think if it's Norwich, I'd be really surprised. I'll be surprised if normal, it's just one of those like oh, normal, yeah. I would say West Ham yeah. you going so is that D West Ham yeah is that your final answer <sighs> I still think we should go to Norwich I'm afraid we're going to have to go to a commercial break <laughs> <laughs> just kidding All right, D is not D is not West Ham I'm sorry you've lost £4,000 you, you got it home with £2,000 though oh. respect to amount same as me I got did the exact same thing it was Norwich it's actually Norwich. That's disappointing. I might quickly go through it again, just because I want to get onto some of the other questions. See if we can do because I got the next, the one after that wrong as well. But yeah, it was actually so Norwich. Were, that was tricky, I think, because West Ham have always kind of yo-yoed quite a bit. I haven't know they? they've been relegated for ages. I presume they've been kind of up there for a while. Like, but then I said, yeah, I knew Power had played for them around the time we got into the Premier League. So. It's probably when um, Norwich had that god awful kit. Yeah, and they've had a few. Like a horrible. That like, just patch. Like, don't like know what to forest, yeah. but yellow kind of kit. So then the next question would have been which player of the following has the most Premiership assists? A, and this is of 2012, well, I don't know if it makes much difference, but is it A, Stephen Gerrard, B, Frank Lampard, C, David Beckham, or D, Dennis Bergkamp? I got this one wrong as well. Most assists. Yeah. Most premiership assists. Well, Burkamp played for like... He didn't play for that long, did he? No, Arsenal. that's what I thought. And then... So it's probably not him. And then, who was the other one? Uh, Beckham. Beckham. You got Gerard Lampard Beckham. Played for a little bit. I want to say Beckham, but... 
I would say... Lampard and Gerrard are going to be very close. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's that Lampard and Gerrard. I'm sure well, Lampard think... was higher on goals, but I think maybe it's Jared. Can you imagine the amount? Of uh, well, I'll give you, I'm going to give you a 50 50 for this one because I know one answer that it's not. At least, and it's oh. probably not Burkham either, if you want to use it. Is, yeah. it. is it not Beckham? I went with Steven Gerrard, and it wasn't Steven Gerrard. See, I think, cause I just think it's Beckham See, because of the amount of balls Lampard. he's put in the box. I love a play for longer, didn't he? Mm. No, but this is 2012, so it doesn't matter. Like, how long was he? Still, I think he would have played for longer. Yeah. I'm saying Lampard. Because how many assists would he be getting this? Okay. Well, yeah. A couple was agreed now. Have to go, yeah. It's right, it's Frank Lampard. Oh, we're on to the big money now. It's 8,000 pounds, we're on to 16,000. Disappointed we got the Norwich one wrong there, really. Well, I we second guess myself. Oof. Always got to get your first answer. So, um, which of these clubs have appeared in more than one Premiership season? A. Barnsley. No. B. Oldham Athletic. No. C. Burnley. Or D. Swindon Town. Well, it's Burnley then, because we've only been in once, run out for a fact. I'm pretty sure Barnsley. Oh, shit, maybe Barnsley been in twice. Oldham only were in once, they got relegated. And it must, must be Burnley, surely. Yeah. It's of 2012. Did they get promoted before that? Yeah, I think. Didn't they? This is 2012, though. I'm trying to think when Burnley went up that yeah. time ago, if it was. Their first time ever. Because I know Blackpool went up around that time. It was their first time ever. Was Was that their first? Was it? Nah, because they've been... They're up this... this They've had two stints, haven't they? I can remember. And then they literally went down and came back up, didn't they? So it would have been like three years ago. Maybe. Because they went down with Sean Dyche and came back up. Oh, I think that might be... Oh, could it be Barnsley? I don't know. It's harder. The time actually makes it harder. I reckon it... I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm maybe thinking it because of the Norwich one. Well, Norwich one's just luck of being there at the season. This is, yeah. And these clubs have appeared in more than one Premiership season. It's got to be Burnley. Is that your final answer? Is Burnley your final answer? I was tempted to say Barnsley. Burnley. Oh, no. I don't know if I'm maybe thinking it because of the Norwich one though. I can't remember. But because it's the Premiership as well, and the Prem's not been... I can't remember Barnsley being in the Prem. That's ages ago, it's like 94, 95. So would they have been in it twice? <sighs> During that period? Seems unlike... Yeah, Naga Fjordkopf was there, I think. So he would have been there for a year. Is that different? I don't know, because I don't know if they were in it for a year. So it's, it's got to be at least one... Like, that's a relegation and promotion back. Two seasons at least. I don't remember, Barn- I don't remember Burnley being in the Premier League oh. before their, their stint the most recent stint yeah. I'm sure I'm sure they must I'm going to say I'm going to say Barnsley, Barnsley. Barnsley. fuck it I'm going to say Barnsley okay, you think he's come to the decision yeah go Barnsley oh it's not Barnsley fuck well that's it then who is it <laughs> I don't know it doesn't give me the answer you have to finish this later oh you have to go back again. yeah I think I'm, I've done that once now huh? Well, it's not a bad attempt. You, so you went home with... Nothing. You had £2,000 the Very same as I did earlier. So. £2,000 for the... It's only... As soon as you get to that question, you're like, shit, it gets really hard, doesn't it? It's really easy up yeah. until then. The Jack Liam Leefield Society. Yeah, uh, thank you for listening to another Free White Men podcast. I've been Jack Stewart. Don't forget all the episodes now up on YouTube as well. So yep, all old episodes be... as well. Our new home on YouTube. Yeah, all can be seen there. Last one, so... you can even see me and Liam's pretty face. They're not up right Almost now, too but they close. will be up by the time this goes up. Yeah, so if you listen to this now, it's probably there. You'll know which one it is because you can see us. Yeah. And we'll be at a dreary Selhurst Park. Not a good ground. We'll see you a little bit. Johnny in Barcelona. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. So we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>